Is it possible that you can buy something to add on to your car that will save you 35% in fuel efficiency and it only costs $200? Even better, it claims it can increase horsepower and extend the engine life of your vehicle. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but we're about to find out testing out a hydrogen generator. In the first test, we'll see if the HHO generator improves zero to 60 performance. Then we'll take a look inside the engine to see if it helps clean the combustion chamber. Then we'll see if it improves fuel efficiency by 35% using this fuel injected generator. According to the manufacturer, lowers fuel consumption up to 35%. Significant reduction in emissions, extended engine life, increased torque and greater power, stronger and smoother acceleration. We're gonna test that. HHO stands for oxyhydrogen, which is a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. I'll just refer to it as hydrogen throughout the video. The price of the hydrogen generator plus shipping was about $200. Just like all the other videos in this channel, I always purchase all the products tested in this channel and never accept free items or any sort of compensation from companies. This kit includes a dry cell hydrogen generator, a couple of rubber hoses. This tank will hold the water and the electrolyte solution. According to the parts list, this is called the bubbler. The kit also comes with a bunch of wire connectors. It comes with two different strands of wire. It comes with potassium hydroxide, which serves as an electrolyte that we'll be using with the water. Finally, some threaded fittings for the water tank, bubbler, and hydrogen generator. A quick look at the diagram of how this is supposed to be set up. The water canister sends water to the hydrogen generator, and the hydrogen generator makes a gas which goes back to the water canister. From the water container, the oxyhydrogen gas goes into the bubbler and then into the engine. Before we install the dry cell in a vehicle, I need to add the wiring to the hydrogen generator. The kit came with both gray and black wiring. I'll use the gray wire for the positive and black for the negative. The kit came with all the connectors I needed to install the kit. I'll go ahead and cut off a piece that's about four inches in length and add a connector for the generator. I'll also go ahead and splice the wires together. I went ahead and added a connector to the black wire. I'll cut a four inch piece of black wire and connect it to the hydrogen generator. I'm going to go ahead and splice the two black wires together. The kit did not come with the Teflon tape, which I highly recommend using if you want to install one of these kits just to make sure that there aren't any leaks. I'll go ahead and attach the two fittings to the hydrogen generator. All of the threaded fittings are the same shape and size. I'll add the three hose fittings to the water tank as well. We'll definitely want a nice tight seal on all the connectors or the hydrogen gas and water will leak out of the tank. A threaded plug goes in the bottom of the bubbler. A threaded hose fitting goes into the side as well as the top of the bubbler as well. A plastic hose attaches to the bubbler. Now that we've attached all the fittings, let's go ahead and install this on the vehicle. I'll be using this kit on a 2003 Chevrolet Suburban with a 5.3 liter V8. I'm just going to have this kit on the vehicle for about a week. So I'm just going to use some cable ties to make this quick and easy to uninstall when it's time to remove the kit. Once we're done removing the kit, we'll do some testing with the generator. The water tank has to be placed a little bit higher up in the generator so the gravity will move the water to the generator. The hose from the top of the water tank attaches to the top of the bubbler. Now that the bubbler is in place, I'll install the non-return valve. We definitely want to make sure we have this valve pointed in the right direction or hydrogen won't pass from the bubbler to the engine. I'll go ahead and remove part of the air intake so I can drill a hole in it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the plastic shavings from the intake so we don't try running the engine on plastic as well. The final step is to connect the rubber hose that's going from the bubbler into the air intake. Unfortunately, the instructions that came with the hydrogen generator just aren't very clear. The top contact goes to the hydrogen generator. The contact on the right is the one that's going to go to our ignition switch. The one on the bottom goes to the battery. And finally, the one on the left is the ground. I'll run the ground wire directly from the hydrogen generator to the frame. For the wire that's running from the positive battery terminal, I'll install the inline fuse that came with the kit. This is the wire that runs to the hydrogen generator. I'll go ahead and remove the fuse for now since I'm attaching the wire to the battery. I'll run the ground wire from the relay to the frame. We only want the hydrogen generator running when the vehicle is running. So the last step is to find a spot in the fuse box that we can tap into that's only hot when the engine is running. The kit did not come with the red insulated wire, so you're probably going to need a little bit of extra wiring if you decide to buy one of these kits. With the ignition switch in the on position, 12 volts, so the wiring should be good to go. I'll add 40 grams of potassium hydroxide to one liter or one quart of water. The more electrolyte that's added to the water, the more amperage is created. This also causes more gas to be produced. However, if you add too much electrolyte in the system, it'll eat up the generator plates a little too fast and cause the water to become dark. I have the ignition in the on position and the generator is making gas. Before I fire up the engine, let's take a look at the spark plug in the top of the piston to establish our baseline. We'll check back after I've driven the vehicle several hundred miles to see if there's any decrease in the amount of carbon that's on the spark plug or the piston. The starting miles is 266,978. I pulled the fuse on the HHO setup. So let's go ahead and see how it performs at 87 octane going up a slight grade into a headwind. Okay, 10.3 seconds to get to 60, heading south. I'll go ahead and turn around and we'll see if we can do any better on the second attempt.
We did slightly better at 9.6 seconds heading north. I'll go ahead and install the fuse and we'll see if we can gain some speed with the HHO. So 10.3 seconds heading south is the time to be. Ten seconds, so it is a little bit faster. So 9.6 seconds heading north is the time to be. Nine point nine seconds, so it's a little bit slower this time with HHO. I'll turn the vehicle around and we'll try this one more time to see if we can do even better. Ten seconds is the time to be. Okay, 10.4 seconds is a little bit slower than the original run without HHO. I'll go ahead and turn around and we'll see if we can beat 9.6 seconds. Nine point eight seconds. So the vehicle is a little bit faster without HHO three out of four times. Other than adding a little bit more drag to the alternator, the HHO really didn't seem to help or hurt things too much. We've driven the vehicle about 250 miles on HHO, so let's take a look inside the engine and see how everything looks. I really can't tell any difference from before using HHO in the spark plug or the carbon deposits on the piston. It all looks about the same. Let's test fuel efficiency using a fuel injected generator. To establish our baseline, I'll just run the engine on gasoline and not HHO. Before testing it though, I'm going to go ahead and warm up the engine for about 5 minutes. The engine is fully warmed up, so I'll go ahead and turn off the fuel supply and let the engine run out of fuel. The engine is out of fuel. So let's start our test and see how long the engine will run without HHO. I'll go ahead and fill the 500 milliliter fuel cell with non-ethanol gasoline and then open up the fuel line. As soon as the engine is started, I'll go ahead and power up five halogen lights to place a load on the engine. We'll see how long the engine will run until it's completely out of fuel. The outlet on the left is powering up two halogen lights and using close to 930 watts. The outlet on the right is powering up three halogen lights and is using close to 1,450 watts. We'll see how this changes when we power up the HHO unit. We're nine and a half minutes into the test and the fuel cell is a little more than halfway used up. We're just over 14 minutes and the fuel level is about to run out. Once the fuel cell is used up, it takes about two minutes for the fuel inside the fuel line as well as the fuel pump to be totally used up. The generator is out of fuel at 19 minutes and 46 seconds. Before we kick off the test, let's take a look at the spark plug in the top of the piston. We'll see if the HHO cleans up the engine and the spark plug. The spark plug is pretty clean, but there's definitely plenty of opportunity for the HHO to clean up the top of the piston. Let's set up the HHO kit on the generator and we'll see if it can beat 19 minutes and 46 seconds. Since I've already shortened the clear hose that came with the kit, I've got some air hose that I'll be using for the generator. The generator produces 120 volts of alternating current and the hydrogen generator is designed for 12 volts direct current. In order to make this work as designed, I'll be using an alternating current to direct current power converter. According to the instructions that came with the HHO kit, I should reduce the amount of HHO gas that I feed the generator since the generator engine is a lot smaller than the Chevrolet Suburbans. I'll measure out 10 grams of potassium hydroxide and mix it with two cups of water or 500 milliliters. All the plumbing is hooked up, so let's test the setup just to make sure it's working properly. Okay, the power converter is using about five and a half watts. I'm gonna go ahead and connect up the hydrogen generator and we'll see how much power it's using. Okay, 35 watts minus five is about 30 watts. The HHO system is definitely working and making gas. I'll feed the HHO directly into the intake, but we first need to cut a hole in the air filter assembly. Everything is set up, so I'll go ahead and fill up the fuel cell, open up the fuel line, and we'll start the test. With the HHO, the engine sounds exactly the same and seems to be running just fine. I really can't tell any difference. We're about eight and a half minutes into the test and the fuel cell is about halfway used up. 35% fuel savings isn't looking very promising at this point. The engine temperature seems to be pretty much the same as well. At 13 minutes, the fuel burn rate seems pretty similar as it was without the HHO. The fuel cell is empty and now the engine is using the fuel that's inside the fuel line as well as the fuel pump. 19 minutes and 46 seconds is the time to beat. 
and it's lights out for the generator at 19 minutes and 37 seconds or nine seconds less runtime. So the generator wasn't hurt too much by the HHO, but it didn't help it either. I'm really curious to see what happens if we double the concentration of electrolyte and see how much that changes the results. So I'll add 30 grams of potassium hydroxide to two cups of water or about 500 milliliters. Then I'll pour the contents into the HHO tank. We doubled the amount of electrolyte and the energy consumption also doubled. So the amount of HHO should be about twice the amount compared to the last test. The HHO system definitely seems to be making more gas. The engine still sounds exactly the same and I can't tell any difference in performance. The fuel cell is completely empty and the generator should shut down in under two minutes. 19 minutes and 46 seconds is the time to beat. During the last test when we used HHO, the generator came up nine seconds short. And it's 19 minutes and 25 seconds this time, which is 21 seconds less runtime compared to not using HHO. Unfortunately, HHO hurt fuel efficiency, but let's look inside the engine to see if it helped clean it up. Looking at the amount of carbon buildup is pretty subjective, but everything seems to look about the same as before HHO. I was really hoping to see the oxygen hydrogen generator kit deliver great results, but unfortunately it just didn't work out. If you've used one of these kits before and received good results or maybe not so good results, I'd love to read your comments in the comment section of the video, so I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. All the videos on this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So thanks for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.